the question that I get most often. At 21, donating a kidney to someone you've never even met before isn't really the norm. But then again, even at that age, neither was I. For under the blue hair, tattoos, and crazy antics, there is a girl that most people never get to meet. There is the youngest recorded, non-direct, living kidney donor. Why? They ask, and I tell them. Because. Because. Because there are not enough organs available. Because there are over 4,700 people in Illinois and 99,000 nationwide waiting for life-saving transplants. Because only 50% of our nation's population signs up to donate their organs after they die. Why? Because think of the recipient, how this will change their life, and the family and friends who will get their loved one back. Because think of how it will change my life. Because this is the best way for me to be the best person that I know how to be. So I went ahead with just my surgeon's approval to guide me and an unknown recipient at my side, and I donated that kidney anyway. Call me rebellious, I guess, but what did you expect from someone with a pink mohawk and body piercings? Because, because what you should expect is that I will give you a second chance to reconsider now who you think might be the one to someday save your life or the life of someone you know and love. Because what you should expect most is that I will never hesitate to tell you that it was one of the best things I have ever done and I would do it again in a heartbeat. And maybe you can't pull off a green mullet like I can, but you can be an organ donor, now or after you've lived a great life and are ready to pass that gift along to someone else. Why? Because organ donation is the right thing to do. Hi, my name is Spencer Glendon, and this is my Leahy story. Nine years ago, Spencer Glendon's life changed following a not-so-routine liver biopsy that discovered primary sclerosing cholangitis. That was the day my life, you know, one of the days my life changed. And that life-altering day led Spencer to the Leahy Clinic and Dr. Fred Gordon. And Fred Gordon was somebody I, I liked to talk to and somebody who wanted to listen and somebody who had, who could also share with me his philosophy of care for this disease and knew a lot about how, what the path was like. That path turned into an eight-year journey, one that saw his liver deteriorate to the point that a transplant would be needed for Spencer to survive. That's where his friend Carl Long enters this story. When I learned about the fact that there was this opportunity or this potential to transplant, that's, that's when it turned from something that I didn't understand to something I thought, well, maybe I can do something. And I remember feeling this amazing feeling of, of joy to know that my blood type was the same. Without telling Spencer, Carl began preparing his body to be a live donor a year before his friend's transplant surgery. Carl started eating a more nutritious diet, exercising more, cutting out alcohol, all with the hope that he would be the perfect match for Spencer, which he was. When we told our friends and uh, loved ones we've reached this time, there were a number of people actually who were tremendously lucky. There were these people, other people who said, oh, we want to, you know, we want to be involved, we want to get tested. And then there was Carl who said, I'm ready. In some ways I'm more touched by their effort to be ready, be, to or reorganize their lives well before I was desperate. Faith had become an overriding theme in Spencer's life through his long ordeal with PSC. Faith in Dr. Gordon and the team at Leahy, an amazement at his friend's profound faith. This whole decade for me basically involved a large amount of faith and, and actually an enormous amount of faith in, in Leahy. Um, because uh, I didn't lead the last 10 years of my life as if I was going to die. Carl felt like he was doing it for himself, for higher reasons, for his boys, for his sense of you know, what love is in the world, that there were these other reasons 
that were his reasons. And the fact that he had those reasons was a tremendous relief to me. You know, love is, is doing, not saying. And so I think I was happy to have a chance to act. I had faith that it was meant to be. And, um, and, I, and it was unwavering. I've never doubted for a minute that this was always designed to be this way. The day of the surgery was an emotional one for Spencer and his wife Lisa, and Carl and his wife Bridget. And Lisa realized, it's better to tell Carl how much this means. Thanks to his new liver from Carl and the team at Leahy, Spencer is now healthier than he's been in more than a decade. He's feeling great and looking forward to telling his godchildren, Finley and Calvin Long, about the gift of life he received from their dad. Telling them what happened will be an important part of our relationship. I don't know how they'll remember it, but I look forward to remembering it for them and sharing. A friend with a loving, living bond, like the one Spencer Glendon has with Carl Long. Fourteen years ago, we got a surprise, and we had three daughters that were pretty well up in age, and our son came along. And then I got a tubal after I had him, because we were through having kids. And after I had the tubal, I had a great deal of pain, just always. So I thought something had been done wrong. But then they discovered all the tumors on my liver, and they were hepatic adenomas, but there were so many they couldn't count all the tumors. Uh, as the tumors got bigger, then, you know, I would feel worse and the pain would get worse. She's a typical patient who falls bet between the cracks. She will, would never have been able to get a liver in a timely fashion. Uh, this is particularly the reason when living donor liver transplantation is invaluable. My brothers and sisters had decided that they wanted to be tested. And my first sister, no, and then my brother, no, and then my other sister, no. So we just didn't have any matches in the family. Dana and I was discussing, and, uh, and some members of the family, it just wasn't matching up, and come to realize, you know, it's hard to find a match. John, I've worked with him for 15 years, and he's always tried, you know, I'll give you part of my liver, I'll give you part, and I would just play it off as a joke. <laughs> oh my goodness. John had called down here and talked to them and set up an appointment to get evaluated. I like to see you smile. That's awesome. He was he was so excited when because he found out that his liver was large enough, you know, that it was large enough for me and him both. I mean, not only did he have a healthy liver, that he had more liver than he needed. We have a roadmap to go to surgery with. It's a picture of the liver taken under the x-ray and uh, gives us an idea not only how big the liver is, but where the vessels go, where they're coming from, how they can be divided without injuring uh, the rest of the liver. Even when we take away 50% of a liver, so half of it, we still leave enough function for the liver not only to survive, but to be able to thrive and regenerate itself. Your normal life will not be impacted by the fact that you were a donor. We did the transplant and I was supposed to be in ICU seven to 10 days and I was only in there 24 hours. I instantly, like I said, I felt better instantly. The healing process was uh, remarkable. Uh, I was up and walking and one day, uh, doctor tested new, uh, how long it was going to take, it, it's just really incredible because he was right. Uh, everything he told me was absolute right. I think this has profound implications for the for the people in Texas, for the patients in Texas with liver disease, especially those patients who have diseases that are not served well with the current distribution system of livers in the United States. And there are quite a few of them. It's going to build hope, hope for others that will say, you know, if, if this pastor, this person, a co-worker, a friend is willing to give, then I can give also. And you know, I can see great things coming from this. The people that it's going to help 
and the lives that, you know, it's going to save. And since that day, I've just met so many people here that, you know, that it's their hope. basically told me uh, my liver was a ticking time bomb because so I would never I never knew what was going to happen the next day. I always thought it was to be a deceased donor. I knew nothing of living donation until my sister brought it to my attention and then I, I took it upon myself. I did YouTube searches. I did Google searches. You know I looked I looked up all the stats and all that stuff and it's pretty amazing. Because a lot of people don't know about it especially the liver that you can because when I would tell people that my brother donated and they're like, well, how did he die? It's like, is he living still? Well, I didn't know you could do that, <laughs> but you can. I just took it upon myself to go get my blood work done, see what my blood type was. We matched and I came to Omaha for an extensive two-day testing and found out that I would be the one that was able to donate my liver. So I was waiting for the phone call from my brother and I gave the phone to my mom. I'm like, I don't want to answer it. So I made her answer it. And he's like, give the phone to Brooke. And he's like, I'm a match. And I just, I couldn't speak, really. I was just in awe. People will know I'm a, I'm a pretty hard-nosed dude. I'm not sensitive in any way, but when it comes to my family, my family are friends. They mean the world to me, so it was a no-brainer. I had no fears, none whatsoever. And with the great staff at UNMC, they really calmed any nerves that I may have had. I was very nervous. I just remember being in our pre-op room, ready, ready, ready to go, and they had to take him first. And the thing I'll never forget is him rolling past my room with his cap on and then just giving me a thumbs up as I'm sitting here bawling because I know he's, he's going right now. And he's just happy, go lucky, just, you know, thumbs up, ready to go. For Brooke, the main goal is to replace her liver because her liver had scarring and cirrhosis and the goal is to make her feeling better. So we take her old liver out and then we put uh, about a third of Brandon's liver into her. And that entails basically plumbing, putting all the blood vessels back together and hooking everything up so the liver can function the way her native liver, a normal liver would. Our philosophy, as with every center that does living donors, is to optimize the safety of the donor. Statistically, the risk of dying from this operation for the donor is 10% lower. Um, so two to three in a thousand versus two to three in 10,000 uh, when you take the left lobe versus the right lobe. Um, it means that we may not be able to do living donors for, for everyone. Uh, and we keep an open mind whenever somebody presents to be evaluated. But whenever possible, uh, we want to look at this from the standpoint of minimizing the risk to the donor. We're still one of the few centers that actually does just isolated left lobe living uh, donation. Uh, the reason again for this is just because again, our biggest goal is to make sure the donor, somebody who's completely healthy, is going to be safe for an operation that they don't need. Nationally and at our center, about 5% of all of the liver transplants are from living donors. Most of that has to do with how technically complex it is to take out a part of the liver and put it back into the recipient. That expertise is not readily available throughout the nation. This is not something you go and train for for a couple of years and you know what, you walk out and you're able to do. This is something that is a culmination of, well, of years of experience that again that here at the Med Center that uh, we have uh, fortunately been able to accumulate. Everyone around us is dedicating to making this as great an experience as possible for the patient. Um, I think we're also very honest with everyone. This, there's nothing low risk about what we do. Liver transplantation, there's nothing, even a deceased donor, straightforward, regular old liver transplant, there is nothing low risk about that. So we take people who have otherwise, you know, limited survival and we try and make it as safe as possible. We try and really just make them feel like that they are the only patients that we're taking care of. And I think that's something that um, we are pride ourselves on being very good at. I can do a lot more things than I could. Um, I'm not as tired at all anymore. Just being able to 
know that I'm gonna be there for my kids now that my liver's not, you know, a ticking time bomb anymore. And that I'll be able to grow older with them. A lot of people were calling me a hero and this and that, and I just thought it was, it's the right thing to do as a brother, as a loving person. The more I read into it, the more I was into coming here. I mean, the staff is great, and they didn't fail me one bit. It was everything it was made out to be. The uh, staff is amazing. I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. I love this hospital. I've been here from, since I've been 14. I've been coming here. So I know it in and out, and I know a lot of the doctors, and so I trust them. For me, as a transplant surgeon and as the donor surgeon, it is such a huge honor to be a part of what Brooke and Brendan did. Uh, it was very brave of uh, their whole family and to be a part of that is very humbling to see what, um, what one person will do for another and uh, we feel very fortunate to be a part of that process for these two amazing people and the rest of their family. We have real people that work at the Med Center that are not just clock punchers. They just don't come in at 8 to 5. You know what? They come here because they have a career and they really enjoy what they do and again I'm very lucky to be a part of a team like we treat every one of our patients as if they are our only patient and we want them to be treated the way we would want to be treated. I mean, I, when I meet patients for evaluation, I say I would let any of my partners operate on me or my family member and I think it's that trust and camaraderie among our team. Um, I send lots of people to the hepatologists, even in our offices here. I have, you know, it's hepatologist, surgeon, hepatologist, surgeon and I think to have that team every day working together is really important. I wouldn't have had anybody else in the world take care of me. I mean, they, the doctors, the nurses, everybody. I mean, they took care of me from the time I was here until the time I left. And even after, I mean, they call, make sure I'm doing all right. Any changes, I mean, it's phenomenal. May 2nd, 2011, I was running around uh, Animal Kingdom. Florida, having a blast with my wife, going on roller coasters, all that stuff. May 3rd, I was in Florida Hospital. A doctor came in after doing a CAT scan, and she said, uh, your liver has shrunken up and is basically useless, and without a transplant, immediately, you're gonna die. When I found out that they didn't know if he was gonna need a transplant within 48 hours, or however long, I mean, I was crushed because I just had no idea what to think or where that put me in my life at that time. Organ donation, finding an organ donor, is not an easy thing. And so 18 people in the United States every day die waiting for an organ, and that's hard. But then there was this other thing called a, a living donor, and they told me I could have somebody donate a portion of their liver, about half, a little bit more than half, and the liver would grow back in them to 100% within four to six weeks. We knew that there was the option of waiting for, for people who were liver donors who had passed away to, to have the chance to give on their organs. Well, that's a beautiful thing, we also knew there was the possibility of live liver donors. I remember when we found out that he needed the transplant, just, just praying, just God, you know, let it, let it be me and it felt like, as soon as I prayed that prayer, that he gave me the sense of peace. Scripture says, by his stripes we are healed. And I look and I say, you know, by his stripe, I am healed. To find out more about becoming an organ donor and expressing true love through that, you can easily just register within five minutes at organdonor.gov. And man, I would love for you to do that. I've got friends who are waiting.